equip a Helm of the Host, get an Inferno Titan. Today on Commander Replay, we check out this $100 budget Nakiri Fearless Voyager Voltron deck. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, if you want to do one-on-one -on -one deck review sessions with me or get your deck list played on video, be sure to check out the GoFundMe link in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing some budget Akiri Fearless Voyager today. Take a look at this opening hand, one land that's a bounce land. That's not going to work, but we have all of our cheap equipments. Makes me sad, let's mulligan. Uh, this isn't too bad. We've got Mask of Memory, three lands... Kazool, Goto, Unblockable? Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. So this is $100 budget Akiri Fearless Voyager. This is actually the second game that I filmed with this deck. After filming the first game, I decided that I wanted to rework the deck a little bit, and that's what I've done here. I did do a test game that I didn't film in the middle, and uh, things actually went pretty well, so I do like this new build of the deck that I've got going here. So let's go ahead and keep, and uh, I'll talk about it just after we take our turn right here. We did win the die roll, and we'll get to go first. So we started off, we draw into another land, lands are helpful, play the Miss Veil Plains, that'll come in tapped, and we'll pass like that, we'll take a peek at the deck during our opponent's turns right here. So here's what I've got going on this deck list, you'll notice low land count. This is a Voltron deck, it's a budget Voltron deck. Budget Akiri presents some interesting problems. A lot of my favorite Boros creatures that I would usually use to win a game have gotten rather expensive. Aurelia, Gisela, Iroas all kind of in that like 10 to 15 dollar range and that wasn't the best neheb also gotten up there aggravated assault also up there so like i really kind of did some soul searching about like how does this deck win because we don't have access to all of the expensive swords because they're not in the budget we don't have access to my favorite creatures that i like to use they're not so much in the budget and we needed to keep the equipment count high just to take advantage of Akiri's ability. So what I settled on, this fairly lowish curve, low creature count, really interactive Voltron deck. So it's not so much that this deck is going to win super quickly, it's not going to be like old Akiri or even like a really high power version of this Akiri where you could probably take someone out on turn 5, turn 6 with commander damage when everything's going your way. This isn't going to be that. It's going to be slower than that, but it has a lot of interaction. Uh, Sunforger is going to be a pretty big deal here. We have things like Deflecting Palm, Price of Progress. Uh, we do have the Sunforger combo with Arcbond, Gideon's Sacrifice, using either Boros Charm or Akiri's ability to give a creature indestructible. And then after that, you need to do either damage to yourself or to a creature. Uh, so we've got a Braid Price of Progress to be able to do that. So we can combo with the Sunforger. We've also got Godo Helm. Uh, Helm is rather expensive. They're about $11. And that is a considerable portion of the budget. If you didn't want to go this route, you could switch out Helm of the Host and either, you know, get yourself like a Sword of Sinew and Steel is a pretty good $10 card. Or, you know, really anything else that you want to slot into the deck over that combo if you don't feel like you need it but I did want to have something uh, that just gives the deck the ability to close the game out should you not be able to keep your commander in play or just the worst should happen whatever that happens to be so we've also got cards like mob rule which can also take out a player or two which generally been pretty good for me so pretty excited about this deck anyway that does bring it back to our turn uh, we do see an anointed chorister for opponent and just some lands from everyone else. Let's play the mountain right here and then play the Mask of Memory. So yeah, this deck is really going to be about getting Akiri in quickly and just putting some equipments on it and then trying to protect it and keep it in play. And like I said, it's not necessarily going to win super fast, but you can kind of pressure everyone, keep drawing cards, draw a lot of interaction, and uh, that's going to be the game plan of the deck. And like I mentioned, it went really well in the one test game that I played. Played against a bunch of non-budget decks and I just had like had answers for everything, and it was fantastic. There was a Sir Gwyn, got him with Deflecting Palm. Uh, I forget what else happened in the game, but had removal for stuff when I needed it, and just, you know, things kind of worked out really well, so. Sky Shroud Ranger coming into play for the Galta. Brings back to our turn. Ooh, that's another Plains. Guess we're playing the Plains. Play Akiri. And next turn, we're going to be hope to draw in a lot of cards, hopefully. Before we move on, we'll take one look at Akiri's abilities. So it's three mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, draw a card. And then, pay a white. You may unattach an equipment from a creature you control. If you do, tap that creature and it gains indestructible until end of turn. Pretty good. That ability has been playing really well. You just leave a white up, and now you force your opponents to play differently. I've been really happy with that ability. Obviously, the card draw is awesome too, but I've talked about it. I think having card draw on a Boros card can, like make people lose focus about 
the other abilities on the card. And uh, yeah, the activated ability has also been really, really good, and I've been really enjoying it. So we've got a lot of cheap equipments in this deck. Not necessarily ones that I would run all the time in like a non-budget Akiri, but I figure since we don't have access to the really good stuff, because a lot of the good equipments have gotten pretty expensive also... Aside from the Swords of X and Y, something like Conqueror's Flail, not the cheapest, Champion's Helm, fairly expensive, Hammer of Nizan, all those other kind of like commander product equipment, they not super cheap, so that's a fraying sanity into play for the Rexiel, yeah. Opponent going on the attack with the Sky Shroud Ranger tells me they probably don't have any more lands. Ouch. Brings back to our turn, ooh, another land. All the lands. Put Mask of Memory on Akiri, and let's see if we can loot some of these lands away. Go to combat. Swing into Zach Ryan. Get a draw. It's a signet. Signets are cool. We hit. Mask of Memory will trigger. Uh, we draw land and Inquisitor's Flail. Could be pretty good. Let's go. Let's discard a planes right here. We seem to have a lot of lands in hand, so get moving on that. Uh, let's get the Boros Signet into play. And, ooh, yeah, we could, uh, we could play a land and get the Inquisitor's Flail right here. Doesn't seem awful. Let's do it. Let's do it. Inquisitor's Flail, not a card that I normally run, because it can be a bit risky, but like I said, that uh, activated ability from Akiri gives you a way to keep your stuff safe so that it doesn't die to the blocker. That's something that can happen quite often with Inquisitor's Flail, is that now the blocker's able to kill the thing you're attacking with, unless you have, like, First Strike or something like that, but... So, not an equipment that's been making a lot of my deck list recently, but it is kind of cool being on a budget. I get to use some cards that I haven't used in a long time, and Inquisitor's Flail, it's a cool little card. Great art. Love the art. And uh, opponent going to do some attack in our way. Yep, send in Linvala into us. Let's take a look at what our opponents are playing today. First up, we have Storm Was a Mistake piloting Linvala, Shield of Seagate. And Linvala, kind of cool. Three mana, three, three flying. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, choose target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Until your next turn, it can't attack, block, or activate its abilities. That's actually really relevant against us. Um, that's actually, like, so incredibly relevant against us. It's, like, not great, honestly, now that I'm looking at it. Uh, their party is three currently, so they're getting there. They're pretty close. Thran Dynamo for the Rexiel. Whisper Silk Cloak for the Rexiel. Yeah, yeah, that, those are all good Rexiel cards. Those are good Rexiel cards. So our next opponent is Zach Ryan piloting Rexiel the Risen Deep. Uh, a commander that I love and should rebuild again because I just like Rexiel. It's a fun card. It's a really unique card too. 5-8 Island Swamp Walk Kraken Leviathan, I think. Is it not showing all the text in there? I think it's Kraken Leviathan. Maybe they changed it. I don't know. Uh, but it says, when it deals combat damage to a player, you may cast an instant or sorcery in that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost, then exile it. Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool little card. Uh, yeah, I need to build a Rexiel deck. And uh, they've got some nice setup pieces going with Whisper Silk Cloak and Fraying Sanity. Should get some work done for them. Galta plays a Harmonize. Get some card draw going. Should be pretty good for them. Hasn't activated the Sky Shroud Ranger, so perhaps no additional lands in hand. Seems not great. We draw some Swift of Boots. Ooh, that's going to be a big deal. This is Target. That is Target. So yeah, Hexproof. Going to be really good for what we're wanting to do. Oh my, that's a 7-5. What? Costs one less for each creature in your party. That's cool. Let's play the Boots. I really don't want to get the uh, Linvala ability on us. That seems real bad. Equip Boots. I uh, guess we're still playing an untapped land. Get the Sun Home in. We may have to discard the Mountain. Equip the Inquisitor's Flail. Uh, I'm going to spread the damage around a little bit instead of just focusing someone super hard because no one likes that. This is going to be a reasonably chill game, so... We'll attack into Storm. We've got the white ability up, so I doubt they block. We'll get to draw a card. It's an Explorer Scope. Oh, they are going to block. All right. Activate Akiri's ability. We'll unequip the Mask of Memory. Unequip. It is now indestructible. So takes down the Seagate Colossus and reduces their party count a little bit. And, uh, yeah, we'll pass the turn like that. Uh, opponent going on the attack. Going to send both in our way. Yep. Down to 33. Opponent did also fire off a Skyclave Plunder during their turn. Look at the top X cards of their library, where X is 3 plus the number of creatures in your party. Put three of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Interesting. I don't really know how to evaluate that card. I guess I need to see it more. Uh, that's a Rexiel coming into play for opponent. Yeah, those are pretty good. Those are pretty good. Our final opponent, by the way, is Champion of Thune, piloting Galta Primal Hunger. This is a budget Galta list that I started working on a while back. Never quite got it 
to where I wanted it to be and uh, just kind of lost interest in it. But who knows? Eventually, maybe I'll finish up Budget Galta. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be like a green ramp snoppy type of deck. Uh, opponent gets themselves an overgrowth going. Yeah, pretty good. Got some dorks. It's got a Sky Shroud Ranger. Pretty soon, I imagine, they'll start dropping the big stuff. And, uh, you know, that'll be interesting for us. We'll see how our deck is able to handle that. There's also a fair amount of board wipes in our deck. Uh, Fumigate, Route, Single Combat, Realm Cloaked Giant. Uh, also, Chain Reaction is in the deck. So, good, pretty good amount of removal. And the idea is to use Akiri's ability to protect yourself from your own board wipes. So that's what's going on there. We draw to another land. Well, let's get this Explorer scope going and see if we can stop drawing lands. That would be ideal. Uh, so re-equip the Mask of Memory. See if we can draw our way into some interactive spells. I think that would be a good idea. Probably want to get these Trailblazers boots going. Uh, Non-basic land walk is going to be pretty good. Will give us ways to attack into people. Yeah, so let's play the Trailblazers boots. I've been trying to get this Flamekin Village in, except uh, the way our mana's been going right now, it just seems like we need all the untapped lands, so keep playing the untapped lands. Eventually, we'll get to the Flamekin Village. Uh, equip the Trailblazer's Boots, and it doesn't look like we can get the Explorer Scope and leave up the ability, so I, uh, you know what we can do? We can still cast the Explorer Scope in the second main, but I'm going to prioritize leaving up Akiri's Protection Ability as opposed to just trying to get this thing equipped, because, yeah. We'll take a poke over to Champ right here. We'll get to draw one with the Akiri. It's a mountain, of course. Drawing a lot of lands, but luckily card draw and looting are uh, going to help us get through all that. So we're going to hit with the Mask of Memory. He's going to take six off of the double damage from the Inquisitor's Flail. And we'll use the Mask of Memory ability. There's some interactive stuff. Uh, let's discard, I guess, another mountain. And then we'll play Explorer Scope in the second main right here. And then we'll leave up a white for the Akiri ability. And we'll pass like that. So yeah, one of the problems in trying to go like fast Voltron is that you need to get a lot of different abilities onto Akiri. Akiri isn't naturally large. It doesn't have natural evasion. It doesn't have natural haste. It's a lot of things that it doesn't have. So that means that you, there's a lot of different equipment that you need to put onto it to make it lethal. So the way that I thought about going with this is more of like a slower but controlling type of Voltron build. That's kind of the plan. Here's a Wrath of God from opponent. Uh, yeah, let's use the Akiri ability. And just, you know, being able to use this ability to uh, thwart board wipes and stuff like that is kind of where my head was at. So let's, uh, let's unequip the Mask of Memory. Here comes a Fiend Hunter. Gonna Fiend Hunter on the Anointed Chorister. That's an interesting play. Oh, chooses not to. Okay. Maybe forgot about the boots, or maybe thought that we would move the boots? I don't know. I don't know what the plan was there. Um, I guess they got Rexiel off the board, because that's like a pretty good idea, right? Uh, Rexiel, really good card. <laughs> maybe that's when you need like a Grixis combat deck. Not a color set normally known for its combat abilities, but could be kind of cool, right? Uh, Anointed Chorister back into us, opponent gained some life off the lifelink. So now the plan is we need to get to 11 mana, we can go Goto Helm, and that's... Essentially how we win the game. Oh, that's an Ugin. Well, that one's going to be harder to protect against. And by harder... Yeah, opponent forgot about the Hexproof on the boots when they tried to do the Fiend Hunter thing, so... Uh, yeah. By harder, I mean that we are not going to be able to protect against that Ugin. And uh, Fiend Hunter will return the creature to play, and our commander is going to go back to the command zone. Luckily, we've got boots, so we can just recast and swing our way into the Ugin. Now, ideally, we'd be able to get... Inquisitor's Flail in there, but that seems like a lot of mana. Seems like a lot of mana. Uh, actually, you know what we could do? We could go. We could just go for Kazools. Might be cheaper if we have to do that, because we obviously don't want this Ugin sticking in play. Gigantosaurus. Five mana for a 10-10, yeah. They'll be paying the minimum for Galta next turn if that sticks. And, you know, why wouldn't it? It's big, it's threatening, but it's not that threatening. I don't know if anyone's going to spend removal on it. There is an Ugin on the board, and what we're doing is kind of threatening. There's an Inferno Titan. What's this at? This is at four loyalty? Hmm. How much mana do we have? Eight when we play a land, if we play an untapped land. That is enough to go Inferno Titan Boots. And I do believe I want to go Inferno Titan Boots. Do we have any elementals in hand? Oh, we need an elemental to get this Flamekin Village in. When are we going to get this thing in? Uh, oh, wait a second. If a crypt Combat damage, combat damage only. Doesn't affect the Inferno Titan trigger. I'm like, wait a second, if all those are doubled, oh my god, that would be so good. Um, okay, yeah, opponents are tapped out, let's get this Inferno Titan. 
Uh, Inferno Titan, shoot the Ugin. Equip Swiffa Boots, Playland. I think Mask of Memory is the better call right here as far as our one mana equips go. So we'll go for that. We'll swing into Storm. We'll use the Inferno Titan trigger, ping Ugin for one, and I guess we'll hit each opponent for one. Ooh, opponent's going to Mystical Tutor. Okay, okay. Opponent did exile their own Fraying Sanity. I'm sure they wanted that. Opponent was trying to avoid the Ugin because of the overgrowth from Champ, but Champ seems like they'll have the ability to kind of get themselves going a bit more. Opponent gets a Tunnel Vision. What? <laughs> tunnel Vision? What are they up to? Uh, we draw some things. We draw a Response Resurgence, pretty good, and a Dawn Charm. What are we getting rid of? Ew. We have the boots, so I'm going to ditch the Flamekin Village right here. I love Flamekin Village, but uh, we've been needing all the untapped lands just to kind of keep doing what we're doing, and we've got haste covered with Swiftfoot boots. Now, if those get shot, then we'll be very sad, but for now, seems okay. Seems like we have the haste covered. Now, here he's binding on the Gigantosaurus. Can't attack, block, or have its activated abilities activated, but still a 10-10 that'll cost reduce Galta to the minimum. And Illuminarch Ascension in for opponent. <laughs> opponent's gonna target us with the tunnel vision I hope this isn't some like make us lose the game nonsense we do not have two white permanents in play for the Mistvale vale planes opponent names sort of the animus yeah it's a pretty good one pretty good one putting some stuff to the graveyard yeah that's why I wanted to hang on to this uh, buried ruin arc bond is now in the graveyard that's part of our combo means we would need to recycle it with the Mistvale vale to uh, put that back on the table Helm of the Ooh, Helm of the Host in the graveyard means we'll have to get that back with the buried ruin. Oy. So the worst part is now that means we have to hard cast it. Ugh. Yeah, opponent got us pretty good with that. Sun Titan in the graveyard. Ooh, yeah. Animate dead on the Cavalier. Shoot one of our things, I'm sure. I'd imagine probably the boots. Those are the ones that uh really kind of cause a headache. Oh, I'm gonna go for the Inquisitor's Flail. Doesn't want us just melting everyone's life total. Okay. Also fair. Also fair. <laughs> Luminarch Ascension gets a counter on it. So just to put this in perspective, we're at 67 well, we're at 67 cards in our library. We did mill probably almost 10. So let's just say we were at like 77. And that still puts us like, you know, five or six cards ahead of what our opponents are doing. Pretty easily, so. Yeah, Akiri drawing cards. Card draw on the command zone. Pretty good. Here's Galta coming into play. Yep, and there's a Haunted Cloak. Gonna give it Trample, Haste, and Vigilance. Those are some abilities. I think we're about to get slapped by Galta. Let's see if Champ wants to uh, start a little battle here. Yes, he does. All right, in comes Galta. Target acquired for this Inferno Titan. Might be looking at the Fog Mode of Dawn Charm. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Oh, it's got Vigilance. It's going to be so hard to get through that. Oh, and the Inquisitor's Flail down. So Inquisitor's Flail would have made it so blocking is not profitable for them. And uh, that's gone out the window. Well, we draw a Sword of the Animus. Cool. Play a Buried Ruin. Oh, what are we doing this turn? Well, we could Sunforger with Goto, but we probably still don't have enough to really kind of make that everything we want it to be. Sword of the Animus would take four mana, and then we go one, two, three, four, five. That would use like, all of our mana to... Response Resurgence, or use the Resurgence half. Getting Akiri into play gives us the ability to hold up Indestructible, which is probably valuable. Problem is we don't have a lot of size happening at this moment. Let's get a King, or do we just get Sword of the Animist? Akiri is also going to be 5, that would use most of our mana. Let's go Sword of the Animist, we have Mask of Memory in play, so... Mostly red cards in our hand, so we're going to try to use mostly white mana right here. Sword of the Animist in Equip Sword of the Animist. Uh, put Explorer Scope on. Ooh. We've hit a lot of lands already. Like The math for Explorer Scope is going down, although we're at 60 cards in Library. What are we on after that? We're holding up Wild Ricochet. Yeah, I guess equip it. Take this turn to try to get ramped up, and we'll have to make a choice between uh, Wild Ricochet or Dawn Charm, depending on what happens. We'll attack... Yeah, we'll attack Storm right here. We want the uh, Mask Trigger, I think. Inferno Titan Trigger. Champ can take that one to the face. Uh, we'll put Sword of the Animist in the middle and then Explorer Scope on top. Play the percentages. And there's the land. Drop the land in. Very nice. We paid two to get a land. Sword of the Animist. Get another land. I think we need a mountain. We do have a lot of red stuff that we want to be doing. 
So, like, something that would be kind of cool is if we draw into mob rule and we, like, fog for a turn and then mob rule everything and start taking people down. Uh, hit with the Mask of Memory. Opponent goes down to 30. Oh, there's the mob rule. Found it. We found it. <laughs> what are we discarding? Um, huh. Mob rule extra combat seems really good. Do we give up on the Abunus and hope people don't crush our artifacts? I think that's the play. I think that's the play. Pass like that. How much mana do we have now? We have 11 mana, which is enough to go mob rule resurgence. Linvala back to play. Yep. Uh, this one is power three or greater. Always confuse the power in the CMC cards, but that would not grab Cavalier or Linvala in this current moment. But Galta, a big boy with uh, Trample. So, you know, that's a thing. Ooh, here's a problem that could come up. If opponents don't attack into Storm, there's Rexiel. Yeah, let's mob rule this Rexiel. I want to mob rule a Rexiel. <laughs> Whisper Silk Cloak on the Rexiel. Beautiful. Um, but yeah, if opponents don't attack Storm at all, then uh, this could be active and that could actually mess up our plans a decent amount. Okay, uh, perfect. Zach going to swing over to the Linvala, see if they want to trade it or what they. Oh, they're going to trade the Linvala. Trade in, trade in the Linvala. Try to get the uh, tokens here. They can make two tokens. Luminarch and Step Trigger. Up to three counters. Getting close. Abundance for opponent. Yeah, that's a cool card. That'll probably help them out quite a bit if uh, the game does continue. After the play that we're looking to make, they've been a little bit stuck. Excellent. Galta over to the Luminarch Ascension player. Oop, that's good. Oh, no, it's swords on Galta. I was going to use that Galta to kill champ. Oh, no. He gains a bunch of life. Oh, I think we wait on the play. I don't think there's enough incentive to do all of that right now. Oh. Yep, four counters on the Luminar extension. Oh, my, that's a duelist heritage. Opponent has entirely basics. Trailblazer's boots will not get us through. Eee. It's not the best. That is not the best. So we've got a Duelist Heritage. We've got a Goto that I'd like to get at some point. We've got a bunch of things that we want to hold up. I'll tell you what, a Feast and Famine would really take this deck to the next step because you want to do all this interactive stuff. Hit with Feast and Famine, untap all your lands. Then you've got so much more mana to work with. Haven't drawn any of our Trample equipments. It's disappointing. Disappointing. This deck definitely needs a Thaumatic Compass. I'll try to work one of those in afterwards. Guess we play this Duelist Heritage... I think I'm going to swing into Storm anyway. Like, I know we won't get the Mask Trigger because they'll just block with one. But eating some of the Angels seems like it could be a good idea. Oh, they're going to make an Angel now? They make an Angel. Well, now we can Mob Rule, but I still don't think it's worth it. I wanted to do the Mob Rule into uh, Response thing. Swing into Storm. Duel's Heritage on the bottom. Double Strike the Inferno Titan. Inferno Titan Trigger. Champ's got the most life. Nah, eh, maybe we'll spread it around. Uh, sort of the Animist on the bottom, Explorer Scope on top, play the percentages again. Hit the percentages again! We've seen a lot of lands this game. There isn't that many lands in this deck. I think it's 35? Take a peek in a second. Sort of the Animist trigger. Uh, yep, get another mountain. Actually, ooh, uh, you know what? Ameria is uh, too expensive for this deck, which made me very sad because don't really have a great way to get that Sun Titan back. Opponent's going to block with the Angel, just like we expected. But we ramped two, and that's a pretty good place to be. We can take five to get a Kiri. We can leave three mana up. Kind of want to leave up the Wild Ricochet. Maybe just put Trailblazers on Inferno Titan. Leave up some mana. May activate the Buried Ruin. I think that could be an interesting play. Copy Inferno Titan. Do lots of Inferno titan -y stuff. But if opponents put out enough creatures onto the board that actually matter, then uh, we can do the Mob Rule uh, Resurgence thing. And that's the thing with this deck. Is so it's not a I'm going to melt every person at the table kind of deck. It's, I'm going to use a lot of tricky stuff like mob rule, price of progress, uh, and just be very interactive and try to use some of their opponent's stuff against them. So this deck is geared for a very creature-based meta in this moment. Um, you could gear it differently if you needed to face more like spell-based combo stuff, but I probably wouldn't want to take a budget of Kiri into that to begin with. Um, I'd want something non-budget if I'm going against spell stuff, but... Wild Ricochet, Reverberate, Dual Caster Mage, Red Elemental Blast, Pyroblast gives you pretty good game against, like, blue decks that want to interact on the stack. 
Just that if you're running all those cards, it's harder to run a lot of board wipes and a lot of creature removal and things like that. So, opponent makes three angels. Yep. Uh, Rexiel into champ. Only a harmonize that he can cast, but still it's a harmonize. Harmonize is cool. Zach's low on cards, so I'm sure he's all about it. Gonna get the harmonize. We could wild ricochet the harmonize, but like we've got a full grip, so I guess we don't need to do that. Also, this deck could use a reliquary tower, honestly. I've played three games with it now, and it's basically looked like this the whole time. Just a full grip all the time. So that's been really cool. Thran Dynamo is a card that I'd also like to get into this deck. That would really help with some of the mana production stuff. But, eh, what are they, like four-ish dollars or so? Tough on a budget. Tough on a budget. I went Hedron Archive, but could really use a second copy of one of those type of cards. Honestly, I think I'd like to still probably get another uh, kill spell or two into the deck. I don't think there's a path, although path isn't always the cheapest. But something like Dispatch would be very good for this deck, just to have another answer against creatures. Wouldn't say no to a Volcanic Offering, which I didn't quite find room for. I want to get some Mana Rocks, Everflowing Chalice, Felwar Stone. Cold Steel Heart, all the Mana Rocks. Found them all. Wouldn't say no to if I could get another Burn card in the deck also. Maybe just throw an Earthquake in, just because, you know. Wipe the board and bring people's life totals down a bit. Seems pretty good. Zack Ryan leaving four mana up. Ooh, that's a little scary. That's a little scary. Uh, that could mess up our plans. But he's been low on cards, so I don't know. Although I guess if he if we go for the mob rule and he counters it, then we just don't go for the other half and try to regroup after that, I guess. Ooh, that's a Fleet Feather Sandals. Yeah, I play that card in Galta. <laughs> that's good in that deck. More Galta? I think Champ Abundance to a land, and it took him like 10 cards to get there. That's insane. Oh, right, this one can't attack. I gotta remember that. Gotta remember that. Yeah, maybe it's not time yet. Maybe it's not time yet. Man, I need opponent to play a non-basic. Uh, we could go for the Helm of the Host thing. That doesn't seem awful. I think Champ's got like an offering or something wacky like that. Ooh, opponent's going to play Increasing Savagery. Okay. So opponent doing it as a political play because he's just trying to stay alive. Okay, okie dokie. We've got an 8-8. Yeah. End step, I'm going to crack the Buried Rune and get back the Helm of the Host. There's a counter for opponent. Get Helm of the Host. Helm of the Host back to hand. Opponent gets another counter. That's a Black Blade Reforged. Still no Trample. Still no Trample. No Legendary Creatures in play either. Got to be careful of that. Could flash out the Kazools, but trying to keep the Inferno Titan protected, I'm sure. Opponents want us to move those boots. If they have any spot removal at all, we will definitely find it. Um, Yeah, let's play a Helm of the Host. Get more Inferno Titans. Equip a Helm of the Host. Don't have the mana for Wild Ricochet. Only enough for Dawn Charm in this moment. Let's do some attacking. Uh, go to combat, get a Helm of the Host trigger, get an Inferno Titan. Okay, yeah, let's uh, think we just start cleaning out the Angels. Uh, swing with both into Storm. Duel to Surge on the bottom, give Inferno Titan double strike. Inferno Titan trigger. One damage there, and two here. Inferno Titan trigger. Two damage there, and I guess one to their face. Sword of the Animist, Explorer Scope. I think a lot of this deck can kind of hinge on how well you do with Explorer Scope also. Hushbringer on top. That'll get shuffled away with the Sword of the Animist. Keep grabbing those mountains. Yep, opponent gonna block the big one. Makes me sad. Yeah, I guess we pass like that. Just leave up the Dawn Charm. Opponent making more angels. Yep. Oh, that's a Cleansing Nova. All artifacts and enchantments. That's gonna hurt so bad. That's gonna hurt so bad. Uh, crap. Crap, 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 crap. Uh... Pff. Anything we can do? That regenerates creatures only. Nah, I think we just, uh, we get slapped pretty hard right here. <laughs> oh, ouch. Left with two Inferno Titans, though. Cavalier Dawn goes down. Opponent gets to return. Animate dead. Wow, that seems really good. Like, really, really good. Oh, God, we're probably going to lose an Inferno Titan. The 1010 is back online. Eee. Eee. Okay, okay. Things were looking good. Man, the swords on that Galta had such big plans for that turn, and then with that going down, just the damage wasn't there, so it didn't make sense to do the thing we've been wanting to do. We need opponents to get some creatures into play. Animate Dead, get the Sun Titan. Uh-oh. Yeah, Animate Dead, Sun Titan's pretty good. I don't think we have a homeward path to get that back either. Get okay, Whisper Silk Cloak. Yep, also pretty good. Also pretty good. But bodies on board, that's what we want. Ooh, we can use the mob rule to borrow the Sun Titan. That I do like. We've got a plan. We've got a plan. Removal is the thing we don't want to see. 
want opponents to do like proactive stuff, put bodies in play. Whisper Silk onto the Rexiel. Yeah. Can't be blocked. We have any spells? I'm sure we do. Heliod's Intervention. Arc Bond is a card. Eh, mostly a lot of artifacts, creatures after that. Rexiel over to Storm, and they've got a Cleansing Nova in the graveyard, which I don't love. Also with Swords. Wrath of God. I don't know if they want to blow up their own Sun Titan, but they probably would like to Swords one of our Inferno Titans. And that wouldn't be amazing. That would not be amazing. They hit with Rexiel. Opponent's down to 16. Let's see what they want to do with this trigger. Goes for the Wrath of God. Oh, uh, no. Destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. That is a regenerate target creature, so Inferno Titan's going to go down. That's unfortunate. Oh, our plans. Our plans keep getting derailed. But why? Uh, what do we do next? Akiri Blackblade, maybe? Kazool's? Good Godo. Godo Sunforger, maybe? Thada Adele. Okay, spicy. Would take the mana ramp after all the artifacts getting blown up. Luckily, we did put a good number of lands into play with our uh, equipment, so I think we're actually ahead on lands at the moment. Let's see. We have 12 lands versus 6, 7, and 9. So yeah, we're leading on lands. Here's a Rampaging Balots. That's exactly the type of card you want to see for uh, our little plan here that we've been waiting so long, <laughs> so long for things to shape up. The removal keeps flying. Zach says he could have done that better. Too much damage on the board. Uh, Storm says he's got to leave. That's unfortunate. He said he's out of cards, doesn't have that much going on. Yeah, that's fair. I get it. But uh, did, did have other plans going on, so yep. Anyway, recast to Kiri. We have a Fire Shrieker. Cool card. We never got that Flamekin Village into play. Makes me sad now. Here comes Akiri. Uh, play a Blackblader Forged. Equip a Blackblader Forged. Akiri is giant, and we've got mana up for our protection ability. Seems a good. <laughs> if Zach wanted to, he could make this unblockable and then steal our Sunforger. Not that he'd be able to use it, but he'd be able to keep us from using it, and uh, I'm sure he would enjoy that. Yep. Equips the Thought of Adele. Yep, here it comes. Here it comes. You know, we could Dawn Charm this to prevent that, but uh doesn't seem worth it. Rampaging Balos over there. We want to we wanna keep ourselves protected in case uh, things should go wrong. <laughs> oh, opponent went for the Bloodthirsty Blade. I forgot I put that in this deck. This is such good creature protection. Uh, also, it's bugged on Magic Online. The gold mechanic doesn't quite work right, and that may be an issue. <laughs> so, opponent's going to put the Bloodthirsty Blade on our Akiri. Akiri will not be attacking Zach Ryan. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice play out of him. Uh, that's a really nice play. Uh, I tip my cap, sir. That's... <laughs> I thought for sure he would have went for Sunforger just so we don't have it, but, you know, uh, this is a budget deck. No Teferi's Protection. No, uh, well, most of the other things for Sunforger aren't too bad, money-wise, but Teferi's Protection is the big one that's, like, that's a really big piece because so hard to interact with someone who's got Sunforger Teferi's Protection. Opponent plays the land, gets a beast. Oh, they're going to Genesis Wave X5. Come on, creatures. Come on, creatures. Check on our mana. Do we actually have enough to still do the thing? That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes. Gotta hope that's not a counter over there, though. Uh, they hit a bunch of lands, which makes four rampaging Balos triggers, and that's pretty good. That's how we're gonna try and win this game. Hope there's no counter spell over there. <laughs> Mob rule really good when there's green decks at the table. And Galta. Yep. Opponents at thirty-four. That's still a lot of life, honestly. Balas over to Zach. Yep. Yeah. Brings it back to our turn. This is our time. Ooh, that's a Citadel Siege. Um, we're not going to need that, unfortunately. But let's play the mob rule. Creatures power four or greater. Here we go. Although, I guess we can wild ricochet a counterspell if we need to. But then we won't be able to resurgence and we'll have to make sure that we get them all on one swing. And haven't done the math yet. Uh, opponent going to shoot our sun home. Okie dokie. Wants no part of that sun home. <laughs> Luckily, we've already used it for mana. Uh, let me read this one real quick. This is a sorcery. Creatures you control gain first strike and vigilance until end of turn. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an initial main phase. So I think this is the one you want to play during the first main phase. Got to be careful. Make sure you read all the extra combats uh, when they come up because they can matter. Can matter when you play them. Uh, something you think about a little bit more when you start running Marog, one of the new cards. Opponent's going to strip mine our last white. Okay, float the white. Spite blowing up the land, that seems fair. Go to combat. This one has to attack champ everyone else into Zach Ryan. 
Champ will actually survive. No, he's got six commander damage on him. Uh, actually, yeah, so I don't even think we needed to play the second combat spell, but opponents are tapped out. No big deal. There's a core blade master. Cheap way to give your commander double strike. And down they go. Nice. Didn't even need the second combat. Overdid it a little. Uh, yeah, so it worked. Uh, I've played two games with this deck, and they've both gone similarly to this. The first one that I played was a little bit quicker, uh, the one that I didn't film with this specific build of the deck. But yeah, this is the plan. It's, it's kind of an interactive Voltron deck. It's not about blazing speed. It's about kind of sustaining through the game and having answers to different things. I probably need to work on the answers package just a bit more. Like I said, I'd love to get like a dispatch into the deck. Maybe even like a ghostly prison might make sense here. Ghostly prison, thaumatic compass, something like that, just to kind of keep ourselves safe from attacks. So I might tinker with this list just a teeny bit more. Um, so be sure to check the deck list below. Uh, let's, we talked about the Thaumatic Compass. I think we definitely want one of those. Compass in. What's coming out? Hushbringer is in here as just like an anti-green card because a lot of green decks just slam a lot of ETB creatures and this gives you some game against that. They now need to at least try and blow up the Hushbringer before they can do all the stuff they want to do. What are we taking out? Angelic Renewal is a cute little card in this deck. Basically just a way to get our commander back regardless of how it dies. So if the Fleshbag Marauder type stuff's starts coming in and we can't protect against it angelic renewal gives you something for that it's a type of card that you could cut like it's not the most important thing yeah i guess for right now i'm gonna say no i think i want to keep the angelic renewal maybe we need another source of trample in the deck also or just unblockable something like that um one thing that didn't make the deck was tome of legends manifold key and that's a thing that i like to use quite a bit but just didn't have room when you're trying to get all the effects you need for a kiri and trying to keep that equipment count high just eats up a lot of deck slots so I guess maybe the Hushbringer. Hushbringer, it's a very specific piece of tech. So, you know, it's going to be good against a lot of things. It's not going to be good against every single thing ever. So we'll cut that for now. But uh, I might tinker with this deck list just a teeny bit more. So like I said, this is not a blazing fast Voltron deck. It's kind of about sustaining the game and having answers to a lot of different things. Using that protection ability on Akiri when it makes sense to do that. So it's a lot of holding mana up. Probably need to get a little bit more instant speed with things to better accommodate for that. Uh, I'd still have another piece of mana ramp in here if we could get that. Maybe like a Blink Moth Urn. So I'm going to tinker with this deck list a little bit more. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, in addition to my TCG affiliate player link, I now have an affiliate link with Flipside Gaming, an LGS from my hometown. You can use the promo code REPLAY to save 10% on your next order over $10. Both affiliate links are in the description below. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. We have one new Patreon supporter in Giant Dad Shadow. Giant Dad Shadow, you are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon link below.